Hello. So today we are doing this problem called subarray sum equals k. So the problem states that we get an array of integers and an integer k, and we need to find the total number of continuous subarray that sum to k. Such, for example, here we have this array, and k is equal to two, and we need to find the subarrays, contiguous subarrays, that have sum two. And so in this case, it's this and this. So it's just two. Um, and we have here the range constraints and values constraints. So how can we um, solve this problem? Um, the first solution I'm going to look at is um, um, get set on limited exception with Python, but it's still interesting to look at. To look at and from there, we can build up to um, a more advanced solution. Okay, so let's see. So if we take, let's just put um, the length of um, the array in N, and let's define a prefix sum array. So basically what we are going to do is we, if we have an array, say one, two, three, four, five, um, in order to find the sum, so if we have, um, we are going to build a prefix sum array, right? So that would mean we would have three, um, 6, 10, 15. And to find the sum between the index this and this, or between this sum here, we just need to take this, the index from here, the prefix sum here minus the prefix sum here. Um, and that's the idea here. So our prefix sum would be um, equal to 0 or um, plus 1. So we are just going to have an extra long one so that the, because the first one sums nothing, so it's zero. And then we are going to have the count that counts the number of these subarrays. And, um, and then we need to calculate these prefix, prefix sums. So let's have an i in range goes from, one to n plus one. So the first one is zero, so we need, don't need to calculate it. We just need to calculate the rest. Um, and so that would be um, prefix sum of i. So the current prefix sum is the previous one, the previous prefix sum, plus the, which is minus one here, plus the value we are looking at, which is minus one. So remember here, minus one, because we want to calculate for the for this value here, which index is zero, it's the value two in prefix sum i. So to get this value, we need i minus one. Um, and that should work here. Um, and then, um, so once we calculated the prefix sum, we can go and um, find those differences that equal to k between these sums. So every difference between a prefix sum and another prefix sum is basically the sum of the elements in between. So we just need to go through all these combinations of these prefix sums and find the ones that are equal to k. Um, and those would be the ones we count. And so, to do that, we are going to start from here and then keep putting um, the end at here and then here and then here um, and then advance start and keep putting I after the end after it and continue that way. So for end, it's in range that goes from start plus one. So we would put, for example, start here. And then we'll put end here. And then we'll keep advancing, um, we'll keep advancing end. We'll keep advancing end, and then after we are done processing, we will advance start, and we'll keep doing that until we find all the, the, the sums, um, the ranges that sum to, to k. So this here needs to stop at n plus one. And we need to check just if 
the range between these two prefix sum is equal to um, is equal to k. And in that case, we'll just increase count. Um, and here we return count. Um, okay, let's run this. Uh, yeah, there's one thing missing here. Okay, let's see if this passes. It will tell you probably. Um, okay, so that means that so it tell you on like a further like a case that is um at the end almost. But I'm just I just want to show you this method. It's not that efficient, but it's useful to know. Um, and then we can build up from it. So one optimization we can do is not pre-calculate the prefix sum and just calculate it in the same loop. So instead of doing this, um, we can just, instead of keeping track of an array of prefix sum, we can just keep track of the cumulative sum um, that we initialize to zero. And every time we are at a new start, so what we want is only the, what we don't want to check here is only what's between the pre the sum at start and the sum at end. So let's just check check that. So the way to check that is we will initialize at start at zero, and then instead here to include the value at start, we will start the end at start. And then we will add every time um, the value at end. And here, instead of checking this, we just check this since S is just the values between start and end. Um, and if it's equal to K, we increase the count. Um, so this one should also be, should be slightly better, but not that efficient. Um, so here we can do this, we'd have to do N. Okay, so we can see that this one also is almost as efficient as the first one. It it gets term limited exceeded on the same use case. So let's go from this solution, try to optimize this even more. So what did we do, do here? So what we did here is just find, so what we did in this solution is just find a range, find range um, between i and j that sums to k that's that's just what we did so because if we have a sum at a, at position j minus sum at a position i that is equal to k that means that the ranges between j and i and j have some k right so and that's what we need to find and so this here means that sum of i is equal to sum of j minus k. So we can just go through the array finding the sum value, um, the cumulative sum every time, and then check if we did find the sum before that, that is equal to this. If we did find one that is equal to that, that means that there is a range between i and j that has some k. And in order to find if there was a sum that we found before, we can just have a map that stores these sums so that we can check that map and check even how many sums that are equal to this that we found. And we can store those. And that's all that we are going to do here. Um, so the way to do that would be to, so we need a map, as we said. So let's call it sums map. And we need, um, something that counts the number of occurrences of these sums. And we can just go from this. Um, and so we are just doing cumulative sum here. And what we are going to check is just if S minus um, 
k is in the sums map, which means we already encountered this sum. If you already encountered a sum like this, um, that means that we have a, an interval from i to j that sums to k, and so we can increase the, increase the value there. And so here we can increase count value by the number of occurrences of this value because the interval k would be formed with which each with each um, occurrence of this s minus k. And so this would be s minus k. Um, and then we would do sums map of s is equal to, we just keep track of the sums that we encountered and keep track of how many times we found them so that next sum can use them to, to calculate here. So that would mean get s default value is zero plus one. And uh, at the end, just return count. Mm, we need that value. Okay, so we have one problem here, which is so for the sum that is between one and say, for example, for this, if k was equal to three, then for one plus two, would, where the sum is equal to three, k, is, but there was no sum before that, that equal to, like, let's say zero, so that we can, we can find, we can find this and we can say that we have the, we have, we can find this and we can say that we have three minus three equal to zero. So we want to find if we have k is equal to three and we are here. So our sum is three, which is equal to zero. But when we check if zero is in some map, we won't find it. And so that's a problem with all cases like this. And so in order to avoid having that issue, we just need um, to put in the map that zero maps to one. And so if we do check if zero is in the map, we'll find that that it is, and then its value is one, so we will add one to the count, um, which is correct here. And so, yeah, this should solve this problem. Um, it does, let's run this, and this passes. Um, yeah, so this is the efficient solution for this. Um, there is a slight improvement that we can make here, which is using Python's, um, counter so we can import from collections um, counter and instead of using the map we can just use counter here and to, to do the same thing that we did here by mapping zero to one like this we can just do that by doing counter of zero equals one and the way counter is going to help us is it's going to help us in avoiding in not writing this if statement because counter if you say counter of two and two doesn't exist in in, in counter yet because we haven't put it yet then it will return zero so for every key that isn't there so it's the same as a map except that it maps keys to a number of occurrences um, and if a key is not in in it, then it will return zero. So that would mean that we don't need to do this, this check. We can just do this. And if S minus K is not in the counter, then it will just add zero, which is um, the same as skipping it. So that works. And here, um, since we don't need the default zero, since by default it returns zero, we can just do counter of S. Um, but this is just also verbose. We can just do plus one like this. Um, and yeah, this should work. Yeah. And the solution also passes. Um, that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.